Hi, I'm John Carter at the PDMA Conference in Chicago. This video will show you ways in which Agile can be extended beyond software. Basically, I are going to give this presentation and echoing Bob Corporale's uh, presentation this morning where he talked about creative strategy. I am going to do the creative arc of a storyline, so I'm going to set up the problem basically. This is the agenda, what we're going to go through here. I hate the linear format of PowerPoint, plenty of time for discussion. First of all, I would like to make this interactive. So if you don't understand something, or more importantly, if you don't agree, or given half of you have done Agile or know quite a bit about it, please speak up. So anyway, what we'd like to do is, is cover these topics here, basically talk about what I think, and the, one of the reasons this session is in the disruptive category is I think Agile probably is one of the most disruptive things to come along in product development in a while. Uh, there was time-based competition and of course there's been stage gates or waterfalls. I really think right now the disruption is in Agile and it's pretty well rooted in software development firms and IT and slowly emerging in, in more tangible products. We're going to talk about Agile for software, we're going to contrast that with Agile for tangible products. And so when we had the, the show of hands with all those different examples from minerals all the way to consumer electronics and medical devices, we're basically speaking about a, a, a large range of products out of strict software. Although what we're going to do also applies to software as well. So it's not, uh, not exclusively just the physical products. Anyway, what we'd like to do is, is set up the problem and I'll a couple, uh, touch on the first couple points, especially with why it's so difficult to do and why firms have been slow in adopting it. This is a little bit of our background. We only have one slide on this. This is a small firm. About half of it is in this room today. I have experience in innovation. I was a co-inventor of the noise class. I was chief engineer there and developed the first uh, wave radio system and that was a terrible experience. I was both chief engineer and a project manager and boy did I learn a lot. Uh, it was it was successful but very painful. I've also, I went on the dark side and raised uh, private equity and uh, was a CTO of the Clips Group and then uh, also I'm on the board of the directors of a public company, Cirrus Logic, and they make audio chips that power our cell phones. Let's first define Agile. I'm going to go quickly because you guys are expert at it. We're not going to talk about Kanban, we're going to talk on the, about the Scrum form of Agile. And basically it's pretty simple. If you look at teams, there are three roles. Scrum Master basically eliminates roadblocks. You've got the product owner, which is the proxy for the customer. And then you've got the team. Scrum teams are limited typically to six to nine. If you need more people on your product effort, you have more than one Scrum team. There are some key ceremonies. The first at the beginning of a sprint, which is typically two weeks, is planning and estimation, and there are a bunch of best practices for doing that. In the middle is daily stand-ups and monitoring. Typically, the monitoring consists of, of plotting story points, or basically the amount of functionality that's delivered during that sprint. And at the end of sprints, there's demos and retrospectives. This is going to be key when it comes to tangible products, because unlike software, you can't release a tangible product every two weeks. It's totally impractical. We'll talk a little bit about uh, demos and, and how you get, a, get by with different kinds of creative prototyping. And then finally, the foundation of Agile, the key component, and if I look at Agile the simplest way, just if you abstract it, it's what can we do? performance teams that are accountable for delivery that iterate. And that's kind of the core of doing Agile. But there's a fixed link sprints. Their stories and epics basically are the requirements. Rather than doing marketing requirements document or supplementing them with uh, uh, stories that uh, guide the engineering teams. Managers, this is an interesting inversion. And talk about the impediments to implementing Agile. And the servant manager is the most critical gate that we find in in doing this because the managers serve the team rather than the other way around it. And the other part that makes Agile so successful is its close position via the product owner to the customer. This is another difficulty in terms of implementation because unfortunately many organizations don't have a very robust product marketing organization. Not that they're, they're skilled, they just don't have enough headcount. And so this can be a challenge. So what are some of the challenges that we see? Basically, why have tangible products been slow to adapt Agile? In the group here, how many who are in this category have done it? OK, great. Uh, t t just a couple of you tell me how it's going. You raised your hand. Oh, 
Awesome. Ha have you gone through a complete product cycle yet? No. Uh-huh. But so, so far, so good. We have products like You've released a commercial version of, of the product that the team was working on. Yes. Great. Great. And oh, someone over here, share what uh, what you've had. Well, I would echo this for years that Agile Waterfall are usually exclusive. We have to is kind of in our stage game waterfall process. So we get a little sprints. And then the whole all or nothing, we, we kind of started, you know, small and adopted more of the scrum methodology. Terrific. You should be up here. <laughs> uh, you exa you're exactly right. Uh, and I want to just touch on that misconception because I think it's one of the biggest, which is agile. And uh, we're going to use these terms synonymously, stage gate, milestone or waterfall, basically mean a, a management review of the progress uh, um, of the product development activity. So we use those synonymously. But I think a lot of agile zealots absolutely believe that they can't coexist. But we've done a lot of work in the medical device arena, for example, where FDA requirements, regulatory requirements are really important. And really, you have to maintain that, what's called design control system, uh, to ensure compliance. Um, the other, I, I think the other uh, consideration which you mentioned is uh, many organizations feel it's all or nothing. So if you can't implement every component of it, then it's not going to be successful. I'd like to bring you back to the Agile Manifesto. This was uh, derived in Snowmass, uh, Utah in, 19, in 2001, about 16 years ago, by a bunch of software engineers and process people. They were working on three problems. First problem is that engineers got burnt out at the end of development. Second problem is they worked on a lot of code that didn't get shipped. And the third is they didn't have predictable schedules. So they worked on this set of guiding principles. And what's really interesting, especially for those of you at PDMA, is 75% of them are just, you know, basic best practices, things that you would normally do. Only three out of the 12 relate to software. And Jeannie's going to talk about how you use prototypes and demos and other techniques to get around those last three. One of the things we've also done is we took a third party study of the benefits that software teams and IT got while doing Agile. And we looked at that with a lens of tangible products rather than software. And then we kind of graded their impact and benefit. And if you can see the top four, which relate to things like hitting schedules and reducing burnout, as well as being closer to the customer and improving innovation, those in itself, those four are worthy of, of considering Agile in your organization. If you work your way down the list to the red items, those are less relevant, but I would attest that, that the uh, four first things are very important and, and well worth it. Let's just talk about some differences. You know, what are we talking about? Why is this so different? Why is it hard? And I think a really great way to look at it is developing software is like a snowball rolling down a hill. And in the agile format, as the snowball rolls down the hill, you add more and more features and functionality in each sprint. It's very linear. And once you exceed the, the MVP, the minimum viable product, you can ship. So it's very easy to control schedule and to make it, you just, you shed features. But uh, tangible products are, uh, they're a lot less linear. Their uh, true form and shape comes much later and much more, if you will, in bigger chunks. And therefore it's hard to really adapt this kind of methodology in these systems to agile development because in software you can truly generate a shippable product. So you need to be able to see the future through things like paper prototypes, uh, uh, mock-ups, models, simulations, working prototypes, working models, and so forth, so you can bring the future forward. And that's a little bit trickier, but possible to do in tangible products. It's about a billion dollar company. They don't make blood pressure monitors, but it's something like that. It's a consumer medical grade device. And one of the things that they did is they had a really stripped down agile process. They didn't do estimations at the beginning. They didn't do a lot of detailed planning. They didn't do you know, estimation poker. They didn't track, or do burn downs. They didn't do any of that stuff. What they did is they focused on demo. So at the end of each sprint, as Jeannie talked about, they would do a paper prototype or they might do a mock-up or industrial style diagram. They also had something really cool, which is they rotated who they did the demo to. 
So one sprint, it might be to, uh, let's say, diagonal executives. Next sprint might include some folks from the uh, customer, customer proxy. Next sprint would be senior executives. So they did this constant rotation, which gave them feedback, but also from different levels of, of uh, stakeholders. So no sprints, uh, estimates, no burn down charts. Uh, one of the things they did, and this reinforces the, one of our members here in their audience, is they left their what they call design control, their FDA compliant milestone system totally in place. So they didn't have to go in through any huge political battles on that. It really enabled this. So what are some of the, the costs? Uh, this wasn't free. Uh, they, they had some complaints from engineering. They didn't like spending so much time writing stories. Uh, they didn't like the, the, the drudge that they called it. And also there were tangible costs in terms of prototypes that we outlined before. Um, the benefits though, and, and some of these are huge and I think we can extrapolate this to financial benefits, is um, it really forced decisions and so the, the projects were on time because when you do short interval scheduling that sprints allow, you can really manage your schedule adherence. And the, the best was that I would say they failed to launch or fit, you know, they'd have stillborn projects about one out of every 10 design cycles, maybe one out of five, maybe one out of seven. This would demoralize the engineering team and the project management team. They totally eliminated that. They called it improved accuracy. So if you want to equate that, that maybe it's a 10% reduction in their product development expense just due to the terrible waste and morale that uh, would be uh, impacted if, if you didn't release a product or it failed so soon in the marketplace. This one I got from the president of Lab 126, which is at Amazon's hardware development team. They did the, the Kindle and of course the Echo with its 10,000 skills. It's an amazing group, 4,000 engineers in Silicon Valley. And this is, I'm gonna be interested to hear um, how you've used this before, but one of the ways he really justified doing Agile in his organization is he looked at, well, what is the cost of a two week delay because you've got some middle management tussle where a product marketing manager wants this feature and engineering say, love to help you, no can do. And so they go through a two week wasted time exercise because of course the senior managers travel. They're not around and they need to make the call. So you can quantify this cost. And basically there are two uh, cost streams. One is the deferred revenue. And certainly in consumer electronics, if you're late for Christmas, you've lost that revenue, it's gone. And the other is just the increased cost in terms of burn rate. So you add these up in their typical teams, it's about a million dollars. So you can save, and, and this is the way Agile works. We're talking about it, it's so great. And it, it is good, it's not the, the panacea for everything, but if it stops these two week delays, you can save real money by doing it. And this is a, another, uh, uh, if you will, a case study that's been used by a very successful hardware manufacturer. So in summary, I think we've demonstrated it can accelerate, can save time, and as both we say and, and some experienced members in our audience have demonstrated, it's the best of both worlds with a Waterfall and Agile. Functional managers are likely to be the biggest barriers. And we just heard three really great ways in which uh, we can uh, <laughs> bring them on board and make them part of the solution. And also these case studies show that these companies that have implemented really have done a stripped down implementation, but still gotten a lot of the good gains about it. So with this in mind, I'd like to uh, make two offers available and then we'll have some opportunity for discussion. First of all, we've got an Agile Innovation Sprint or Agile Readiness uh, Scorecard. We've got a bunch of copies up front. Uh, you can certainly have one or if we run out, we can email you them. And the other is Jeannie and I have written a book on Innovate Products Faster that talks about some of these best practices and it's available on Amazon. You can download it for your Kindle.